on five day one, which is titled expected value. And we're going to answer the question, how much can I expect to win? We're going to do pages 13 and 14, but we're going to look at page 16 first. Okay, so in your packet, flip over to page 16. And you're going to go down to the bottom of page 16, where we have the math notes box. Okay? Math notes box are when they give you specific to topics and they kind of like give definitions and example problems. Okay? So on page 16, it talks about unions, intersections, and complements. And it says a subset of outcomes from a sample space is called an event. For example, if you randomly chose an integer from 1 to 10, the sample space is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The event prime numbers would be the set 2, 3, 5, and 7. And the event even numbers would be the set of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. The complement of an event is the set of all outcomes in the sample space that are not in the original event. For example, the complement of prime numbers is the set of 1, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10. The intersection of two events is the event in which both the first event and the second event occur. So the intersection of the events 2, 3, 5, and 7 and 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 would be 2 because the number 2 is in both events. That is, 2 is both prime and even. The union of two events is the event in which the first event or the second event or both occur. So the union of events 2, 3, 5, 7 and 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 is anything that uh, appears in either of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 10. The probability of randomly choosing a number that is prime or even is 8 out of 10 because there are 8 numbers in the union and 10 numbers total in the sample space and the outcomes are equally likely. The probability of the, the, probability of the union of the two events can be calculated by using the addition rule. The addition rule we talked about yesterday <laughs> and is as follows. You're going to take the probability of one event plus the probability of the other event, and you're going to subtract any overlap. Okay? If you let event A be 2, 3, 5, 7, and event B be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, then A would be 4 out of 10, B would be 5 out of 10, and their overlap would be 1 out of 10. Then the probability of drawing a prime number would be 4 tenths plus 5 tenths minus 1 tenths, which would be 8 tenths. All right? If you have a highlighter, you can highlight the words that I highlighted. If you don't have a highlighter, just go ahead and circle them with your pencil or pen. Any questions on that math notes box? All right, flip back over to page, what were we on? 13. All right, back up at the top of page 13, we're going to do the problem 47, which is titled, Take a Spin. Consider the following game. After you spin the wheel at right, you win the amount spun. Explore this on the e-tool if you want, but basically it looks like this, and you spin it as many times as it tells you to. So for part A, it says if you play the game 10 times, how much money would you expect to win? What if you played the game 30 times? How about 100 times? Explain your process. So I want you to pretend that you're going to play this game 100 times, and I want you to tell me how much money you think you're going to win. I would win blank 
because, and you're going to explain why you think you would win that much money. So write that down on your paper right now. Start with, I would win a certain amount of money because, and you're going to write down why you think you would win that much. All right? Part B says, if you were to play only once, what would you expect to earn according to your answer in part A? Is it actually possible to win that amount? Explain why or why not, okay? So if you were to spin it only one time, <coughs> your chances of winning or what you would expect to win would be $2, okay? How do I get that? Because there's two choices. There's a zero dollars and there's a four dollars. So you add those two together and you divide by the two choices, which is two. That's called taking the average. But is it actually possible to win two dollars? It's not actually possible. You're either only going to win zero or you're going to win four. Okay? So if you're if your average is going to be $2, how much are you likely to win if you spin it 100 times? Anybody want to share their answer? You guessed 40? Anybody else? So you think you're only going to win 10 times? Yeah. 200. Because half of the time you might win $4 and half of the time you would uh, win zero. So you would expect to win about $200. Why? Because these this is evenly split. It's split right down the middle. So you have roughly a 50% chance of winning zero and a 50% chance of winning four out of 100 spins is going to be, you should average about 100 or $200, okay? Question number 48. What if the spinner looks like the one at right instead? And again, you can use the E tool, but we're going to answer question A. If you, uh, and this spinner looks slightly different, right? So we still have half of it at zero, but the other side is divided uh, evenly into $4 and $100, okay? If you win the amount that comes up on each spin, how much would you expect to win after four spins? What about after 100 spins? You're gonna write down what you think you would win. So you're gonna write, I would win blank, And you're going to say why you think you would win that much. Okay, now we're going to actually calculate what you would actually win. So for part B, it says calculate this, this spinner's expected value. That is, what are the expected winnings for each spin? Be ready to justify your answers, okay? If you add it all together, in four spins out of $104, you would win an average of 26, okay? Because four spins, one, two, three, four, would get you 104. Divide that by four, you're gonna get an average of 26 in four spins. So if you did a hundred spins, you could multiply that um, by 25. All right, question down to the bottom, C. Gustavo described his thinking for part B this way. Half the time, I will earn nothing. One fourth of the time, 
I'll earn four dollars. And the other one-fourth of the time, I'll earn 100. So for one spin, I can expect to win half of zero plus one-fourth of four plus one-fourth of 100. Calculate Gustavo's expression. Does this result match the part from part B? So you're going to say zero, four, 100. That's going to add up to 104 divided by four. So it's a 26 average. Any questions on part, is that C? Yes, part C. Anybody still writing? Okay, flip over to the top of page 14. Up at the top of page 14, we have question 49. It says, Jesse has created the spinner at right. This time, if you land on a positive number, you win that amount of money. However, if you land on a negative number, you lose that amount of money. Want to try it? And you can try it on the e-tool when we break up into groups. But for now, we're just going to predict based on the way it's divided up. So part A says, before analyzing the spinner, predict whether a person would win money or lose money after a bunch of spin after many spins okay so this one has positive and negative numbers a 6 a 2 a negative 2 and a negative 5 so you're going to say i predict that they would win money in the end or that they would lose money in the end Okay. Then for part B, we're going to calculate we're going to calculate the actual expected value. Okay. How does the result compare to your estimate because you guessed in part A to your estimate from part A? So let's say we did, bless you. We did 8 spins. Out of eight spins, because this is divided into eights, this is fourths, this is fourths, this is one eighths, this is three eighths. Okay? So it's likely that you would get the six, the six, the two, the two, one negative two, and three negative fives, because that's three of those. Okay? If you add up all of those different choices out of eight times, you would get negative one, and then negative one divided by eight is negative 0 0.125. That's roughly 12 and a half cents, but we don't have half pennies anymore. We have got rid of those a while ago in the United States. We only have full pennies, so we're going to round that up to 13 cents per game, you would actually lose, okay? How many of you predicted that we would lose? Just a couple? Okay, awesome. Part C says, what would the expected value be if the spinner were fair? Discuss this with your team. What does it mean for a spinner to be fair? If the spinner was fair, it means that you would even out or you would end up with zero somehow. You wouldn't earn money and you wouldn't lose money. You would end up even, okay? So for part D, it says, how could you change the spinner to make it fair? Draw your new spinner and show why it is fair. So for part D, you're going to say, I would make it fair by, and say, and explain what you would do to make your spinner fair. And then over to the right, you're going to draw a spinner, and you're going to fill it in so that it's fair. That it's going to come out even, or zero.
All right. And the last question. 